Hey guys, welcome to Redneck Off The Range. Today I want to talk about why I love Makita Power Tools. Um, as you can see here, it's probably hard to see, but I have 12 tools or other battery operated items made by Makita. So we'll just kind of go through them right now. I have a drill driver, an impact driver, I have a, an oscillating multi-tool, I have a drywall screwdriver, a drywall cutout tool, I have a half inch impact wrench, up there I have a, an 18 volt power source, I have a circular saw, a vacuum, a, um, a router, a light, and an angle grinder. I'm not sure how easy you can see the angle grinder from back there. So I just have so many tools that it's hard to actually fit them on this table. But um, why do I love Makita Power Tools? Well, first and foremost, I'm going to be upfront and honest with you and say that the only reason that I ever kind of got into Makita Tools in the beginning is because I got a really good deal on a used set of Makita Tools, and that was this drill and impact driver here. I got those from a buddy of mine from work, and I got you know the two tools, I got a case, I got two 1.5 amp hour batteries, and a charger. I got all that for 50 bucks, and um, that's pretty good considering that one of these brand new on today's market is probably like $100 for just the tool. Um, so 50 bucks for all that, even though it was used, I would say that's a pretty good deal. And then just from there, after knowing you know my experience with the tools, um, I just really came to love them and I just started buying more tools for more projects. So um, that brings me to my first reason why I love Makita Power Tools and that is because with my experience uh, with both Makita and many other brands, I have found that the RPMs, at least for like their drills and drivers, seem to be uh, pretty they seem to be a lot higher than other tool brands. So let me just bring in my other drill that I own and I'll demonstrate that. So here I have a skill 20 volt drill driver. Um, I got this as part of a, a, a kit, a four tool kit. Um, and I haven't really used the drill all that much uh, compared to the other tools because listen to the RPMs on this. That's not you know, too quick when I guess I was spoiled by having a Makita. Now, both of these have two speed settings, so we just kind of compare them uh, fairly here. So this is the uh, lower setting compared to the Makita. Significantly more power coming out of the Makita. Change it to the second setting, the higher setting, and it really doesn't even seem like it's that much more than what it was before onto the Makita. Oh yeah, that is significantly more. And it's not just the drill, it's the impact driver. It's the impact wrench. You know, I do have a, an impact driver with the skill that I felt that the the demonstration worked just fine with just showing the drill because it's um, it's about the same. So, and I know some people are going to say, well, you know, the skill that's not a very high quality tool. Well, and you're right. This is the only one that I currently own, other than the Makita. But I have had experience with Rigid, with Ryobi, with Porter Cable, with Dewalt, and um, I guess that's it. But, and, you know, and, oh, and uh, Black & Decker. So, you know, all those drills and drivers that I've used, they don't compare to the Makita in terms of RPMs. Um, they're more comparable with the skill, and they may be a little bit faster than the skill, but they're more comparable to me, to this, than to that, because I remember being at work and saying to myself, um, you know, with the rigid and the porter cable, you know, <laughs> this isn't very fast. This doesn't seem like a very powerful drill or a very powerful driver. Um, 
compared to what I have. And I guess it's just because I was spoiled with having a Makita. And I personally think that the Makita, having those higher RPMs on the drills and drivers and possibly other tools, um, I think that makes them a better option than some of these other uh, tool companies. Uh, I don't have any experience with Milwaukee. I'm sure Milwaukee is a fine tool company, um, but you know, with my experience with all those other brands, I would say that the Makita tops all of them. Another reason why I love Makita tools is because they have one of the most, if not the most, tools in their tool, I don't, I don't really know how to word this, but like they have a very large variety of tools. Now, um, they don't have every single power tool that you could ever possibly imagine in their lineup, but they do have quite a few. Now, yeah, I know they, they just came out with a grease gun. They don't have, they don't have a framing nailer, and we're talking about just 18 volt battery uh, tools here, um, just in this you know LXT lineup. Um, so you know they don't have. There are several things that they don't have. They don't have a heat gun. They don't have. You know, I don't even know what else. But there are several tools that say Milwaukee or Dewalt or other companies have made for a little while now that uh, Makita hasn't come out with. But I'm sure they'll come out with more of those types of tools in the future. Like they just came out with that grease gun. I would love to get me one of those grease guns because. Um, uh, we're going to be getting a tractor here in the next several months and having a good grease gun is something you want to have with a tractor. Um, so they have a very wide variety of tools and other things that you wouldn't even necessarily think of to put a, an 18 volt battery on. Like they have battery powered wheelbarrows, they have, um, geez, um, they have all kinds of different types of lights, work lights, flashlights. Um, they have freaking coffee makers. Um, geez, I'm trying to, they have all kinds of things. They have heated jackets and fan jackets and fans and um, just so many different things. They have like a backpack power source where you can put like four batteries in and then hook that power source up to like your string trimmer or your chainsaw or your leaf blower or whatever. You know, they have all kinds of different tools out there that you can get. Now, some of them are very expensive. Like there is like a, a little Roomba-like, you know, robotic vacuum. That's very expensive and it takes, uh, I guess it takes two batteries. Um, but I mean, you know, some of them are very expensive, but they do, they are options if you have a plethora of Makita batteries and you know you just want to go that route and have your cordless route so they do have a lot of different options um another reason why i love makita tools is because they're more of a higher end tool company in other words like you have your budget tools like you know your black and deckers and your your harbor freight tools and your skills you know i'd say those are fairly budget friendly for the do-it-yourselfer um, and you know, the cobalts, you know, they're, they're, they're lower quality. I'm not saying they're bad quality, but they're definitely lower quality than any of these Makita tools. Um, these Makita tools are more like for your tradesmen, um, and your professionals, people who use them all the time. Like for instance, um, I know I bought this used, but as you can tell, this is like the most beat up tool that I have here. Um, based off of the initials that are on the tool, I would say that this originally was my buddy's father's, you know, and he used the crap out of it, and then he gave it to his son, and then he used the crap out of it, and then he gave it to me, and then I started using the crap out of it. Um, I've used this for so many different projects, and it, has, it still works like it's brand new. Um, you know, it doesn't look like it's brand new, but it still works like it's brand new. And that is a brushed tool. And I know everybody says, you know, brushless is the way to go now because they last longer and they're, um, you know, they're, they're just all better tools. And I do have several brushed tools here, like the, uh, the router and the impact wrench and the angle grinder and, um, the drywall screwdriver. I th at least I think this is brushless. This is brushless. 
Uh, yes, it is brushless. So I do have, what, four brushless tools here, um, but I also have a lot of brush tools as well, and I haven't had a problem with any of them. Um, I have used some more than others, but I haven't had any sort of problem with any of these tools with as much as I've used them, and I've used all of them. Um, and I'll go into that in just a minute. So um, they're definitely a higher quality tool brand. I put them up with like Milwaukee, um, DeWalt, even though I kind of have some personal feelings about DeWalt, but DeWalt is more of a professional grade tool company. Um, and then you have like Hilti. Hilti might be a little bit higher quality than in any of these. I don't have any experience with them, but I have heard that, you know, they're very expensive and, you know, a lot of your like professionals use Hilti tools. Um, and there might be one or two other brands out there that I'm forgetting. But uh, typically your big three are Makita, Milwaukee, and DeWalt. Those are like your big three, kind of like your big three car manufacturers. That's the big three, um, the big three power tool manufacturers. Which brings me into my last reason why I love Makita tools. And that is because Makita is one of the last remaining tool companies that is uh, privately owned. They're owned, you know, they're their own company is what I'm trying to say. Um, in recent years, and you know, I, I don't even know how long, how far back this goes, but you know, for a long time, I guess, um, you've had these big tool monopolies that have just been buying up other brands and you know, the more brands that you buy up and start to mass produce, um, you kind of lose that quality. Um, and, you know, I don't know all of the monopolies out there, but I, I do know that Stanley is probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest tool monopolies out there. You know, they obviously own Stanley Hand Tools. They own DeWalt. They own um, Black & Decker. They own Craftsman. They own Bostitch. And they own just a bunch of other different brands. Um, but that's just one... Um, that's just one example. Uh, I know that whoever owns Milwaukee, I believe they also own uh, Ryobi and, you know, whatever. Uh, whoever owns Skill owns, I think, Cobalt Power Tools. So there are a lot of other tool monopolies out there that one parent company is making all these other brands. And a lot of them, they send their production over to China and you know, what was once a good tool brand is no longer that great of a tool company. Like Craftsman, Craftsman used to be awesome. Now they're owned by Stanley with, you know, DeWalt and Black & Decker, and if you ask me, they're junk. And Stanley does a lot of dirty stuff with, you know, their employees and their service uh, centers and, you know, everything. I know people who have worked for uh, Stanley and they're now out of a job because Stanley decided that they were going to close a large number of their service centers. And why? I have no idea because, you know, the more tool companies you, you have, the more tools you're going to need to fix. And so therefore, you're going to need a lot of service people to repair those tools for your warranty claims and everything else. But they decided, yeah, we're going to get rid of you. And that's just one thing that happens when you get these giant tool monopolies. I'm sure Makita has their own, their own, you know, skeletons in their closet on things that they've done over the years, and I, I don't know all of that, but I do know that, you know, once you start getting these big tool monopolies, a lot of sketchy things happen, and um, I don't like that. And I'm kind of glad that Makita is owned by themselves, at least for now, um, because they make some really good quality tools, and as far as I can see, they have continued to crank out some good quality tools. Now, um, I have said that I have used every single one of these tools, and I just kind of want to go into what I've used all these tools for. Now, you know, the drill and the driver, I've used those for many, many things because those are two very, um, those, those are two things that you use a lot. Um, with all kinds of different projects. Same with the circular saw, although I have another circular saw that I've used before this, so I haven't used this one quite as much um, compared to having the other circular saw. 
But the biggest project that I've used most of these tools for is basically what you're looking at, you know, our basement project. So as you can see here, we have the TV room, we have the wet bar area here, that door is my room, that's the stairway, and in here we have what is referred to as the game room, that's a barn door, which is gonna go over here. Um, and this is just kind of more of like the uh, playroom area for the kids. We have the electrical room there. We have the furnace room here. And we have the bathroom in there. And that is the basement project that we are currently working on and almost done with. So, for our basement project, I have used, me and my parents, we have used the drill, the impact driver, the light, the vacuum, the drywall screwdriver, the drywall cutout tool, the circular saw, and the multi-tool. Um, we've used, oh, and the, did I say the angle grinder? I've used the angle grinder a couple of times in the basement project to cut off nails. Um, so I've used all those tools for this basement project, and several of them I've used for other things, like, you know, the, the angle grinder, I use that to cut, anytime I need metal cut, I use that. Anytime I need to cut some some wood at work, um, you know, make some little notches and stuff, I use the uh, multi-tool. Um, the router I have used to make some signs uh, for my girlfriend's horse barn um, for the stalls. I made all these nameplate signs for her for her birthday, and um, with this little. Um, plunge, um, oh, what do you call these? Um, but this little like jig that it's in, it's a, a plunge, yeah, I forget what it's called. But anyway, uh, using that and the Miles, Miles Craft Sign Pro kit, um, that makes some really nice signs, and so this was a very nice option for that. Um, the vacuum, I mean, do I need to really explain what I, I use a vacuum for? Um, this is just a hand vacuum, they make all kinds of other vacuums. Um, and same with the power source here, it has a couple of, it has a couple of USB ports, so I would use it occasionally for charging my phone when I didn't have a uh, charger, or, or didn't have a wall outlet. Um, so I would use that, and the, um, Impact wrench. I primarily use this in the garage for you know working on cars and stuff, so like lug nuts. Um, and I've used it for you know taking off some brake calipers, and I've used it for um, working on the zero turn lawnmower that we have. Um, and I think that's all the tools that I have, and I've used all of them, some more than others, but I have used them all. None of them have given me any sort of trouble so far. Um, and, you know, obviously I've used the crap out of this, I've used the crap out of this. Um, I use the angle grinder and the multi-tool quite a bit, I use the light quite a bit. Um, and I use the circular saw a fair amount and the uh, impact wrench I use quite a bit as well. So, oh, and the, uh, the vacuum, I use the vacuum quite a bit. So, um, and no problems with any of them. So anyway, that's why I love Makita tools. So. Um, if you're in the market for, you know, buying your first power tool and you want something that's good, high quality, and you're not afraid to spend a little extra money, uh, I would look into the Makita uh, line of tools because they have a plethora of different types of tools. They're higher quality, they have higher RPMs than most, if not all, of the other power tool companies out there, and they're not owned by a monopoly like most other tools out there. The only other tool company I think is not owned by a monopoly is Hilti, um, and there may be one or two others out there, but you know, Makita and Hilti um, are the two that I can think of. Um, most of your other power tool companies are owned by a monopoly, and their quality might not be as good as these companies that are owned by themselves. So, anyway, that's it for that video. Subscribe to my channel, and until next time, be safe.